Hey, welcome to Super Social Club. I'm Jeremy, and today I'm counting down my top 10 whiskeys to try before you die. Uh, my good friend Rob, Whiskey in the Six, he proposed this video to myself and a bunch of other whiskey tubers. I'll link to all their videos down below so you can check out their lists. But just a few ground rules to keep in mind with this list. Um, it's gotta be a whiskey that I've tried before. It can't be anything older than 25 years old. It can't be an independent bottle or a single cask, and it can't be discontinued. So with that in mind, let's get into it. All right, coming in at number 10 is the Arbeg Koi Vrecken. Um, a lot of you guys would have had this one before, but it's such a good staple in the Arbeg Koi range. My favorite out of those for sure. You're getting this nice whiskey with all these compact fl complex flavors. Lots of like weird stuff happening in this. I think I had notes of like tennis balls, like rubber. Um, you get that like medicinal style peat. There's so much at play with this whiskey, but it all just seems to come in in perfect balance, perfect harmony. Um, it is a peat monster. It is in your face. It's explosive on the palate. Uh, great, great whiskey if you like stuff that's like hardcore Isla. Art by Koi Reckon. Coming in at number nine for me is the Talisker 18 year old. Now let's talk about some peated whiskey here with some more elegance to it. This is exactly it. Nice rounded notes here, perfectly balanced. Um, a really, really nice luxury dram. When you're looking for just a little bit of peat, but a well aged whiskey, this one does it all. Coming in at number eight, of course, it's a lot 40 cast strength. This is Canadian whiskey done correctly. Absolutely awesome stuff. It's putting Canadian whiskey back on the map. The richness, the 100% rye notes you get here, the creaminess, the complexity of the flavors, that like banana bread um, aspect that I get out of this whiskey, really, really nice. They started with a 12 year, uh, they went to an 11. This year they're coming out with a non-age statement, but they finished it in French wine casts. I had an opportunity to try it. It is phenomenal stuff. I think I like it better than last year's release for sure. Um, excited to see how this one kind of changes from year to year, but definitely, a uh, lot 40 cast strength, gotta be on the list. All right, number seven, the Cavalan Vino Barrique. Awesome stuff coming out of this Taiwanese distillery. Out of all their expressions, um, I'm a big fan. I chose the Vino Barrique because the consistency. Um, I really do like the sherry cask, although some years are better than others. The 2010 sherry cask didn't really uh, live up to other expressions that I've had of it, but the Vino Barrique has come through year after year. Every single one I've tried has been amazing. Um, it's accessible, you can find it. Um, really nice, rich whiskey. I mean, these things are coming in at six, seven years old and it's just outstanding of how young and how good uh, these whiskeys are. So definitely uh, gotta have a Cavalier on the list. All right, number six, uh, Willet. Pretty much anything Willet is gonna be on uh, my number six choice here. They have awesome expressions ranging from three years old all the way up to like over 20 years old. This particular one's just a three-year-old rye but I've had like a nine year old rye that was absolutely incredible. Their bourbons are also really good. I haven't got up to the upper age statement ones just because they do get so expensive, but anything Willow that I've tried so far is really good, gotta be on the list. All right, number five, gotta have an Octomore here. If you know me, you know the channel, you know my love for Octomore whiskeys. Um, anything 0.3, so this is a 9.3. If you can get your hands on a 6.3, I recommend that. I think that's my favorite Octomore um, that I've tried so far. But all the 0.3s have been good. They're the local, um, the Isla Barley's. Really, really nice stuff. Um, the complexity, the richness, the sweetness. These are the heaviest peated whiskeys, um, some of the heaviest peated whiskeys ever made. Yet the peat doesn't necessarily translate on the nose and the palate. It becomes integrated and it balances out with all these like sweet flavors. You get like, um, sea, shore, like rocks and spray and like ocean air and salt and then you get fruit, you get peaches and you get these farm notes like you get damp hay and you get grass and you get uh, almost like it's almost like a manure kind of note but the most enjoyable like farm fresh notes that you can get out of this it's a it's a magical whiskey and uh, definitely have to have it on the list. Let's go back to America with number four. It's the George T. Stag. Uh, what a fantastic bourbon this is. It has everything that you want in an American whiskey. Rich, complex, um, the notes that you find in here, you know, the, you get brown sugar, you get vanilla, you get typical bourbon notes, but these are all cranked up. Um, the cherry note on this one, I think is what does it for me. It's just beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Um, high ABV, you can bring it down with a little bit of water if you want, it just works perfectly in any situation. Um, production on this stuff has gone up, so these aren't necessarily impossible to find. Yes, they go for stupid money on the secondary market, but if you look at production from, I think, 2016 to 2017, it went up almost double. 
and I think they're upping production more and more and more. You know, they're putting out 25,000 bottles of these a year. That is a very significant amount. That is more than probably half the stuff on this list. So this whiskey, even though it seems impossible to get, it is more available than the other things that you might find out there. Um, I'm not saying purchase this on the secondary market because I would recommend any purchases on the secondary for American bourbons, but you can find this at a bar. Uh, more and more bars will be stocking this now. You can find a pour of it and it's definitely worthwhile doing for sure. Number three on the list is the Glendronic Grand Dewar. This used to be batch nine. Uh, thanks Rob so much for lending me the tail end of this bottle. When I did the Glendronic review, I did the core range, the 12, 15, 18, 21. When I got to this at the very end, noticed a huge difference in quality just completely elevated the whiskey. Um, where I got this kind of bitter oakiness note that kind of ran through that core range, wasn't present at all in here. This is just well-aged, rich, deep sherry notes, um, everything you want in a sherry whiskey. I've heard batch 10 is equally as good as batch nine. So these come out in like yearly batches, uh, definitely worthwhile getting. Awesome, awesome whiskey for sure. Yes, the hype is real, in my opinion, coming in at number two is the Pappy Van Winkle 20 year old. What a phenomenal bourbon, um, perfectly balanced in my opinion. I don't think I've ever had a bourbon before where I can pick out each note in concession, one after the other, super easy. Um, let's say that you get 10 tasting notes out of this, each one is exactly 10%. Talk about balance, this is it. Um, the oak in here, perfectly layered with everything else. You get all those like typical bourbon notes. Everything is cranked up to 11 with the richness that comes with this. And you get this like, I guess they kind of call it like pappy funk. It's this kind of like hard to describe note, but it adds like just an extra layer of depth to this that I haven't picked up in other bourbons. Um, this is just done very, very well. Yes, it is stupid money on the secondary market. Would not recommend paying secondary price for any American spirit, but um, if you can find a bar that's pouring this, it's definitely worthwhile to fork out the money to experience a dram of it. 100%. Um, definitely one of my favorite bourbons of all time. Number two on the list. All right, we've made it to number one, and it is the Springbank 21-year-old. What a phenomenal scotch. This is the most drinkable whiskey I have ever had. You pour yourself a dram, and the next thing you know, your glass is completely empty, and you're kind of thinking, what just happened there? Uh, dangerously, dangerously drinkable. 2019 Expression uses a combination of rum and port casks. I'm not sure what it is about Springbanks this year, but every Springbank that I've tried from the 10 to the 25, the 2019 Expressions just seem like they're all really, really good. I don't have too much experience with the core range going back uh, previous years, but it seems like this year, 2019, has been phenomenal stuff for Springbank. Springbank fans are Springbank fans for life because you get this like unique Campbelltown, element to these whiskeys. The peat in here, it just kind of translates to something completely different than you'd experience in other peated or scotches. Um, that funky element just adds another depth of complexity and it works really well with the rest of the flavors. Um, absolutely love this stuff. So there it is, number one, the 21 year old from Springbank, 2019 bottling. Phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Um, let me know what you think of the list. Um, is there a whiskey that you would add? What's uh, your number one? scotch or whiskey that uh, you would want to try before you die because uh, life's short. You never know when you can go. So uh, yeah, crack those bottles, um, pour them with friends, enjoy it. Check out the description down below. Um, we'll sh I'll link to all of the other whiskey tubers videos. You can check them out, check out their lists, see what they have to say. As always guys, really appreciate you watching. Have a good one. Cheers.